No. Wait. I'm crying. <laughs> I'm crying. I can't take this Stop anymore. Stop it. No. Oh my god. It was too much. Oh. It was too much. It was too much. Someone oh. kill me. Oh my god. Someone kill me. <laughs> Brianna, kill me. Okay. No killing. I can't be here alone. favorite Liam moment in this entire one was like, Liam! My favorite Liam moment, so obviously yes, it's going to involve Liam. Liam! Um, was Liam just being like, I know what I will do. I will fake cry and then the boys will <laughs> let me go and then I will beat the utter crap out of I love it! Instantly turn into like a chair oh match. Oh my god! <laughs> I like how Styles was so surprised, like, what are you doing? <laughs> what the uh, hell are you doing? Okay. Not cool, bro! <laughs> He assaulted Scott McCall with they a chair. They kidnapped him in duct tape, didn't left him in the bathtub! Well, that's true. <laughs> you <laughs> you got me there. there. You have a point. Yes. Do, no, okay, constructively, if you continue to whimper Liam into the camera, it's gonna be a really long video. <sighs> the fault thing. Okay, my theory. He carved this is your fault onto the car. He was yelling at Scott, this is your fault, when he was trying to bludge him to death in the woods. Uh, I'm pretty sure Liam was abused at some point, and they said, like, this is your fault for doing something wrong. Because when he was at the hospital with his ankle sprain, the first thing he did was he started crying, going, this is my fault, this is my fault. And I am not about that life! There are enough abused teenagers on this show! Please, no, take that out of here! But Liam... He was totally checking Kira, though. He's like... Oh. Ah! Ah! He's like, no, you're all, are you okay? <laughs> his face, though! His face <laughs> when Kira I think, down. I think that that was the perfect, like, just in case you forgot. <laughs> like, this boy is a freshman oh, face. My. That was the face of an over-eager freshman who was just like, oh pretty my girl, god, pretty girl, girl, pretty girl. Aww. And then she fell and he was like, oh my god, are you okay? And he Kira was totally was, cool with it. He was just like, are you okay? And Kira literally was just kind of like, hair flip, wanna go to a party? That was a great thing though. It worked, and it worked. And then, and then they brought him to the lake house and chained him up. And then he made a poor decision and invited everyone and their sister there, oh, basically. Man. You don't do a wolf intervention at a party because it's kind of a mood killer. I love Liam so much. Is there any other? Mason. Yeah, what's his deal? I want to know, like, how long him and Liam have been friends? Is it like they went into high school together, or like, is it just... All I know I is know he's really that. sweet, and I like him, and he was trying to calm down Lydia, and I loved it. I like this boy. Oh, Let's keep him. I loved it so much. Scott Curry Parallels! <laughs> <laughs> This episode having to do with Liam dealing with the bite uh, basically brings me around to the thing that killed my soul. Repeatedly, Jeff Davis took a wolfsbane lace knife and just stabbed it repeatedly into various parts of my body, Maggie torture style. Um, oh. That's what I feel like right now. Which was, Scott is now dealing with Liam in, I want to say, the exact like word for word, word for word, word, for word, word exact word. way that, that Derek, Derek dealed with Scott. Scott. We got Scott standing in the background, pulling a Derek creeper out. Like every move you make, I'm watching you, <laughs> and then just disappearing into thin air. We've got, in case you didn't tune in last week, <laughs> we got the exact thing I told Jeff not to do, which was to have Scott look at Liam and be like. Liam, we're brothers now. The bite is a gift. Scott, you know this bite is not a gift. You know! You Scott went is, it! Scott is so panicked. He's, he's like, like, what oh, do I do, oh, Derek? How, how did Derek handle me? It's like, Scott, I don't know if you remember, but, but when you, if you rewatched season one of your own life, <laughs> you hated Derek. And you didn't trust Derek at all. And you refused to be a part of his pack. Therefore, you should not make any of those choices! None of 
criticism. You should do the opposite. You should the not complete do that. opposite. There was zero comfort in everything Derek told you. But you're I'm sorry, the bite is not a gift, the bite is a curse, and I am so sorry. That's what should happen. That's what should happen. And it didn't. It didn't. Then we had to go ahead and pull a visionary parallel. Mm. I'm sorry, you had to do that? Because first of all, okay, that was Scott being like, oh, uh, I, like, I'm not easily distracted, which is what Paige said to Derek. And at that point, I was already pretty done. That makes me nervous. <laughs> I was, I was, so I was done. pretty done at that point. And then, she had to go do the ear thing. thing. She did the ear and, thing. and, like, like, that was a, like, a, that was a point. That was like a point of a parallel. And then, like, Kira did the ear thing, and it was like taking the pen of the point and pushing it through the entire notebook because you needed to make a point. And, like, you just drove that home so much that I got up and I walked out of the room and I had to rewind it. And it's just like, why, why do we need this many parallels? Because it's Be making me miss things because I'm crying too much. Because pain, that's why. Jeff. Jeff. That's why. Jeff. That's why. Also, they're paralleling Derek's life. And as we know, nothing good happens to Derek. Ever. 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 Parallel to Derek's life. The benefactor. I think I think that uh, the benefactor is um, he's not a great guy, especially if there's like kids like you know what we should do today. We should just like hit up this party and then oh BTW, let's just kill someone outside. Poor delivery guy. But now we totally know why he was like, oh, I guess I'll get the keg tab. Your family's not loaded. You just knew you were going to kill a murder that night. You just felt that. So you tipped him and then you're like, I'm going to go get that cash older. That's just rude. It all makes sense and I hate it. And then what's up with throwing the, the, the guy going after Derek and almost hitting the sheriff? Yeah, I don't like that. I mean, I don't care how much Derek's not worth because 15, that's just rude. I want to know more about the benefactor because he's not a good man and if he has got people throwing axes at people's chests just for fifteen hundred thousand million but I don't know but it's not I'm not I'm not I'm not a fan of that like, like that be a friend not don't about be a that life not about that life not about that life no like you stabbed Peter in the chest oh man which although, was kind of funny but like really not cool although. God bless those shots of Ian. Oh, God. God damn. bless. Thank you. To wash my wait. eyes. Wait. Thank you wait. for that. Oh, guys. Got an, oh. oh, God. Didn't the preview of this episode have Peter slashing the person's throat on the school floor? Yes. When did that happen? It didn't. We did finish the episode, right? I want to see a while out. Oh, my God. What if we didn't? Guys. <laughs> what if we didn't finish the episode? Are we so <laughs> The mute was in two episodes, and then it. Me and makes me nervous. The though. mute was the only like bad guy portrayed. We were all worried about the mute killing people with axes and shit, and then and now we have to worry about Garrett and Violet, who are crazy what? apparently. Yeah. Uh, or don't let a party correctly. I don't what? know. We were all worried about that, and then you went and killed him, Peter. And we were we were all like, oh my god, look, it's the mute strangling of this guy. And then we're like, oh my god, Sorry. no, leather jacket, it's a girl, it's Kate. And then it was like, it's neither of those two, <laughs> it is Violet. We that like that like the grass so much. We're just like jacket, like, woman, Kate, no. not Kate, child. What is happening? <laughs> and then she came in, and she was all huggy huggy with Garrett. And we're like, oh shit, he doesn't even know. And then he knew, he knew, he knew. And they get text messages, so they're really, they're in it. Lydia! First of all, they weren't really stidia like shipping moments, but they were stidia like, <laughs> who throws the best parties in Beacon Hills? Me, obviously. <laughs> Don't question it. And the then best. she was just kind of like, uh, and then she opened the door, and she, she could have just been like, party's not here, but she was like, I accept this challenge, and her face was the same face that Lydia makes in season two in Party Guest. And I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. <laughs> Lydia having money problems? What? No. No. What is no. Going on? No. But then she saw the faces in the wall and no, no, but then it was it was Alice's voice on the record player. And then the, 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 the key word was Allison. How dare you? Well, this brings up so many questions. How did the benefactor come up with that password? Because Kate's looking for them, 
Which brings me right back to my original theory that it's Gerard. Oh my god! I would lose my shit. Either Gerard or the Calaveras. But they don't have a connection to Allison, why would their keyword be But Allison? they know about Allison. But I feel like the keyword needs to be important to the user, or the listener. That's true, Gerard. That's what it brings me back. I will not let you make Sneak me up. forget about this no. man. I will never forget about this man and all the terrible things that he's done, and I'm not going to let him sneak up on me. He is literally the worst person on the planet. Stanley! Stanley! Oh my goodness. Stalia. 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 Oh, beautiful. Okay, first of all, I just want to, I want to give major props. I want to give... Super major props to Style Stalinsky for giving Malia what was essentially the anchor talk without using the word anchor and putting such a personal twist on it that was just Aww. like it wasn't really about anchors, but it like reminded her that he is her anchor in this whole like control sucks. It, it, it reminds me of like the Harry Potter thing where it's just like everyone has both light and dark inside them and it's your actions that make you who you are. So he just like took the cuffs off Malia, gave her her own choice on what she wanted to do, and Malia realized that she had the power to not kill Styles, and it was beautiful, and then they hugged and I cried, and I was so proud of her, and I was so proud of him, and I just tears everywhere <laughs> all the time because oh my god the ship just like took off it got like a turbo engine on the back of that boat and now it's just like <laughs> skipping across all the waves he also got a lot out too because i don't think we actually established what he went through because we haven't yeah. had the that time period and it's just like we come back and he we are all like why hasn't he addressed what happened to him and why does he feel the way he feels so that was like Therapeutic for him. Like, he can lean on her and she can lean on him. The secondary most important Stalia moment was, of course, Malia not getting bondage jokes. <laughs> I don't, I don't it was that. so beautiful. Just, I don't, I don't even want to know. There's, not, there's, not, no, there's nothing to get. There's, there's nothing to get. You're fine. Oh my god, and I just, I just laughed so hard and I just cried continuously and just... God bless Dalia. God bless Dalia and Papa Stalinsky and just... Oh. Always God bless. Papa okay, Papa I'm just gonna quick, we're just gonna quick shoot off into this because I Papa Derek. We, we didn't think of a better place to put it. Yep. But there were so many Papa Stalinsky and Derek <gasps> moments today. I can't even believe that team. It was so good. It was so good. It was so good. It was so good. It was I so love great. that team so much and now we're sort of like dragging Parrish, and Parrish into the they team. They need to, like hard. Like I think he'd be okay. And I just wanna I just wanna cry about it all the time. And Parrish was all like, yo, I'm super knowledgeable about all weaponry and I'm just like, yo, Parrish. first of all, speak more about that. <laughs> Two what are you? Tell us what you are. Tell us what you are. Please. I hope that we keep him and then just turn this little triangle of awesome people into a square. back into a square because the beard. <laughs> Two words. The beard is back. Well, that's four. That was four words. Okay. Technically, it's the right, wait, wait, beard. Okay. The important wait, ready? Part. Okay, we can do this over. Okay. No, I like it better that way. All right. <laughs> All right. Chris Argent is back in Beacon Health. I got your text and he was... <gasps> he was I so just, great that we thought he ended the show! Yeah, basically. I thought that was the job that card was, and that I was it. Was we were like, it can't get better than that and then they pulled the Allison card. We caught, we caught Beard and we were like, that's it, can't handle anymore and then we're like... I got your text and then he was all like, <laughs> Scott, I got this. you need to be yourself. Use your own words! Basically it segues back to what you said with, hey, stop saying everything from the Derek Hale handbook because uh, that didn't work for you. That moment in which Papa Arjun was the entire fandom, he was like, hey guys, remember <laughs> Allison? And then also like, Scott, <gasps> you're making a lot of really bad choices with Liam. <laughs> Think you need to fix it. Do it. And then, and then he, he was fixed like, it. And, but then he was like, just go to the clearing. I got it covered. It's taken care of. I put some training wheels on. First of all, like, and I know that I say these two words every time I talk about Chris Argent ever, but character, character development, development all the way. You have gone from pointing a gun at Scott's face and being like, "If you ever come near my daughter ever again, I'm gonna kill you." To you're helping Scott run his pack. 
You're helping him run his pack and train his baby werewolves. Chris Argent has the most well-constructed and just overall best character development ever. And I am so proud of him. You get to star for today. The actual wrap-up of, of the episode was not, in fact, Chris Argent. The actual wrap-up of the episode My was a wrap. nice, like, Peter. life coach... Oh, that's true. No, life coach Scott McCall. You right. know, you are not a monster. <gasps> you are a werewolf. a werewolf. That's right, You're you are. like me. He's like Z. He's really well. So, basically, Teen Wolf is ruining all of our lives. Always. I... Always. Just gonna cry continuously forever for the rest of my life. With us. That's true. Thank you for watching. Uh, claws in, everyone. You can, viewers at home, you should also just... Claws in. Put your, put your claws in front of your laptop. Ready? Ready? Everybody come here. One, One two, two, three. three. Crying! <laughs> Whatever. It's gonna... <laughs>